So here's the laundry room. I'm just gonna put the upper cabinets in now, just the carcasses with a couple shelves, so we can get some stuff put away. And then I can rip everything out and start working on the floor. take down this rack. I'm going to be putting two upper cabinets in here. Uh, no doors, no trim or anything like that. Just installing it for now. Uh, so let's get started. First thing you're going to do is move your drawings, check the layout. Mine are going to go an inch off of this wall and then about 55 inches off the floor. That could they're 34 inch cabinets, gonna give you a good reveal at the top and we're gonna have a gap on the side. I'm gonna be putting doors on these so we need to keep those gaps to give clearance for the doors. All right, so what are you gonna need for installing cabinets? A drill, a pilot bit, just a bit bigger than the screws you're gonna put in. A pack gun with a bit for your screws, some shims, pencil, tape measure, some goggles. You need at least two clamps. You're gonna need a two and a half inch screw with a washer head. And then to screw the cabinets together, you're gonna need one and an eighth for five eighths cabinets or one and a quarter for three quarter inch cabinets. If you don't have the washer head, you can use regular flathead screws and just put a couple cup washers. I like to use a four foot and a two foot level. I like to use these jacks to jack up the cabinets in the right spots. So normally I put the base cabinets in and use these jacks. I'm gonna use the washer and dryer for today, but normally I use these jacks. If I don't have jacks and I don't have a helper, then what I'll do is I'll screw a, a stick to the wall at the height I need. So once we get the layout, we're going to draw a line. You put the stick on the wall, that's going to hold the cabinets up. I've got this already marked out, but I'll show you what I did here. 55 inches or close to off the floor my four foot level, give myself a nice level line, just like that. Now I want it, my cabinets are 29 inches wide and I want a one inch center over there. I'm going to have to take that, this thing off. So I have a 29 inch cabinet, I want to get it an inch off that wall so I leave clearance for the door. So I'm going to go over 30, mark it, I like to take a level and go up, can't reach much higher than that, so I'll just leave it there. We're going to level it once we get it. Now to find the studs, you can use a stud finder. I don't really need a stud finder. I don't like using a stud finder. So what I do is I like to knock. What you're trying to look for is when you're not on a stud, it's gonna sound a little bit hollow. And then when you do hit a stud, there's gonna be a little bit less hollow sound to it. It's gonna, you almost, it almost just feels harder. So with a little practice, you'll get good at it. Right there's a stud, I can, it's less hollow sounding. Right, so, so I'll mark that. Another thing you can do is look for screw pops. So screw pops are gonna be where um, the studs have shrunk and, and there's been a drywall screw pop out. So once you find one stud, you can use that as a reference for your next studs because most houses are 16 inch on centers. So once I find the first stud, then I can go 16 inches from there and find the next one. So to look for screw pops, let's see if we can find them. So right below, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that there's two screw pops here. Right? If you push on them, you can probably see that they move. Get out of the light there. Oh. Anyways, we know that that's a stud, so I can take my level and level up to there which I've already got the line. Once you find all your studs, uh, mark them out. I like to mark them out just below my line. 
That way once the cabinet's up, if I have to adjust something, I know where the stud is. And then I take my drill bit and just double check that that's where the, the studs are. So now that I've found all the studs, I can use this as a reference to mark out the, the, where I want my holes on my cabinet. So what I'll do is measure from my center line, not off the wall because the wall could be out. Um, so once I, I use my center line and I know that this one here is nine and three quarter and this one here is six and a quarter. Which equals 16. So here's my first cabinet. I'm going to mark out four screws. So, so each stud is going to get two screws top and bottom. So what I do is whenever you do math with cabinets, that's when a mistake happens. So we try to avoid to do math. Um, only problem is when we do it this way, sometimes we get stuff mixed up left and right and mirror. But anyways, so if you kind of leave your cabinet like this, I've already marked where the first stud is. So since I've marked where the first stud is, now I'm gonna assume that that stud is straight or plumb. I'm gonna assume it's plumb and straight. Um, it's not always the case. So um, sometimes you're gonna miss, but at the same time, we gotta get this done fast. There are some tricks. If I miss one, I'll show you how to do the tricks. Um, basically, you just put your screw on a bit of an angle and you can usually catch it because usually the stud's only out a little bit. So anyways, to the first stud, I've got nine and three quarters. So I'm gonna mark this uh, nine and three quarter. Nine and three quarter. And what else I'm going to do is just mark down. I'm going to go down three inches and three inches. And then for the next stud, I'm just going to go 16 inches from that point. Right there. 16 inches. Sixteen inches, three and three. Okay. So take your drill bit, go nice and slow. If you go too fast, you can blow it the other side. You want a nice sharp drill bit, and drilling into the drywall all the time dulls the drill bits. So Maybe want to use an old crappy drill bit for checking for studs and this one for drilling in the back of the cabinet. Now this next step is usually a lot nicer. It's usually nicer when you have a helper. Um, when you're a cabinet installer, you can't really afford a helper. So you gotta figure out how to get these cabinets in by themselves. This one's not too heavy, but melamine's pretty heavy. And the other problem is you kind of leaned over to do it. So. How I like to do this is get your cabinet, get your cabinet as close to where you want to have it as possible. Okay? Just like that. And let it lean. The next step is get your jack close to where you need to have it. All right, once you've got it close to where you need it, you want to lift and keep it against the wall until you're close to where you are. So, and then just slip the jack underneath. Try not to turn off. 
Get one screw in there just so it won't fall down on me. And then I double check things with my level here. It looks pretty good. It's on this line pretty good. And if your cabinet's nice and square, everything should line up really nice. The other thing you want to check, this situation doesn't matter because these cabinets are on their own, but if you had a corner unit, you would also need to check this way. So, the bottoms are a little bit in on this cab, so. But other than that, it's pretty good. Okay, that's better. The top screw sucked it in a little bit, so she's pretty good and plumb. Before we bring in our next cabinet, we're going to need to screw these two together. So um, what you can do is take your drill and get your pilot drills ready. Now I put usually put, normally we put three along the front and two in the back corners. So what I do is take my drill set it flat bring it forward and eyeball it about an inch to inch and a quarter right same thing up here and then this guy here is eyeball in the middle just like that in the back cabinets bags you just want to do that corner and Okay, ready for the next cabinet here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do six and a quarter by three. We have pre-marked that out. We're going to go 16 inches. And do another three. And do the same on the bottom. I use my jacks again. A little trick you can do is take a scrap piece of wood and stick it on top and just overhang it a little bit and then you lift your cabinet on and then the next that last cabinet will hold this cabinet in place. Get your two clamps ready and opened up. Stick them in the cabinet. I also like to get my five screws ready and those screws are the two cabinets together and then two and a half inch screws. You don't want to go with too big of a screw in the back wall because if you go too far you can hit some electrical or plumbing so just enough to you want to be about an inch inch and a quarter into the studs uh, and you should be good. Uh, anything beyond that, you could hit something. Anything shorter than that, it's not really going to hold the cabinet very well. Okay, the fun part, get her up. We're going to do the same thing, except we're going to keep the pressure towards the other cabinet 
and against the wall, trying to keep this gable from sliding. That's gonna all be open. I gotta touch up the walls anyways, but in most cases you wanna keep the pressure over here and towards the back wall. Get your jack stand under. This guy's got to go up just a touch. Make sure they're nice and flush in the front and the top. And the same with the bottom. Make sure when you put your clamp on, you're not blocking any of your holes. But you do want to stay close, just like that. Now, before I screw this guy to the wall, I want to double check the back here. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap and it's tight at the top. So I'm going to double check, make sure I'm level, very level. I'm plumb just in case the cabinets are out of square. I built these cabinets so they're perfect, but just uh, if you get Home Depot or Ikea or you have to assemble, a lot of times they're out. And we'll double check it this way. And it's very level that way. So what we want to avoid doing is putting a screw in the bottom and sucking this cabinet in. Because the problem with that is once I put the doors on, I'm going to have trouble getting the doors nice and level and plumb. Uh, and they might twist. Uh, and then it'll also throw the cabinets a little bit out of square. So what you want to do is double check all that stuff. So in this case, I can't screw that bottom in tight, so I want to take a shim and just stick it under where that screw is going to go. Double check that you're good. We're nice. We're nice. Everything's good. So uh, now we can screw it in down here. If you have the problem at the top where you need to shim the top, but you're going to have to go from the side. Um, and then usually you don't do anything for this guy over here. Um, I can get a shim under here for this one, so I'll do that one as well. Get that guy. And I should be able to just screw these tops in, and we're good to go. Take out my jacks. And that's it. I'm just going to vacuum them out, throw in the shelves, and we can fill it up with junk. Make sure you cut these guys out. I seem to always forget that. All 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll try and get some new ones out as soon as I can. And we're going to keep renovating this wander room until my wife's happy.